Hey guys, it's me, Play. Welcome back to a new video. In this video, we'll build on the last part and add a few things to the game. The first thing we need to do is to teleport the player when they go off the screen. To do this, we'll create a new script called ScreenBound and open it up in Visual Studio. In this script, we first need a reference to our camera. We also need a float that will act as a buffer. We then need some private variables that store the positions of the borders. Then in the awake method, we want to check if the main camera is null. And if it is, we set it ourselves. Then in the start method, we want to assign the positions of the borders. We do this using the main camera screen to world point method and we need to pass in the world position of the border. Since the origin of the screen is at the bottom left in Unity, we want to pass in vector 3.0. And we just need the X component. We do something similar for the bottom border, but instead we only need the Y component. Now to find the position of the right border, we use vector 3.right and multiply it by the screen's width. And again we just take the X component. And we do something similar for the top border. But instead we multiply vector 3 dot up with the screen's height. And we take the Y component. Now in update we want to check when the player goes off the screen and teleport them to the other side. So first we'll check the left border. We check that the transform position x component is less than the left border, subtracted by the buffer. Then we set the position to a new vector 3, with an x component of the right border, and the original y component. And we do something similar for the right border, but we want to switch the less than to a greater than. Use right border and add the buffer and instead of and instead of moving to the right border we want to move to the left now for the bottom border we check we check that the y component is less than the bottom border and if it is we want to keep the original x component and set the y component to the top border And finally, for the top border, we check if it's greater than the top border, plus the buffer. And if it is, then we move it to the bottom border. And that's all for the script. Back in Unity, select the player game object and give them the screen bound script. Assign the main camera and set the buffer to 0.5. Now when we play the game, you can see when the player goes off the screen, they're teleported to the other side. And the same goes vertically as well. If I set the buffer to zero, you can see that the player goes off the screen right when the center of their body goes past this border. And this looks a little weird. So by setting the buffer, we can let the player go fully off the screen before they're teleported to the other side. The next thing that we want to cover is player shooting. So let's create a new script called player shoot and open it up in Visual Studio. In this script, we first need a reference to the position our player will shoot from. We'll call this position the muzzle. And we also need a reference to a game object for our bullet. Now we need a float for the bullet force and for the fire rate. Finally, we need a private field for the time since the last shot. In the update method, we need to check for two things. The first is whether or not the player has pressed the left mouse button. We can use input.getKey with the key code of mouse0. 
And we also want to check that the player can actually shoot at this frame, considering the time since last shot and the fire rate. We can create another method which returns a bool. And in this method we simply check that the time since last shot is greater than or equal to 1 divided by our fire rate divided by 60. This formula converts our fire rate to the time between shots. Then we can use this in our if statement. And if the conditions are met, we want to shoot. After shooting, we want to reset the time since the last shot. And finally, at the end of update, we always want to increase the time since last shot by the delta time. Now we can create this method. For now, we can simply debug.log. In the future, we want to instantiate a bullet and add a force to it. Back in Unity, we can give this script to our player and assign some fields. For the muzzle, we'll create a new child game object on the player called muzzle. And we'll position this to the tip. You can set bullet force to something like 20 and the fire rate to something like 500. Create a new game object called bullet and reset its transform. For now, I'll move it over to the side so we can actually see what we're working with. As a child of the bullet, give it a square sprite. This will be the graphics. You can change the color if you'd like. Leave the size as it is. On the parent bullet object, we can add a new collider. Use a boxed collider 2D. Also give it a rigid body 2D and set the gravity scale to zero. Scale it so that it looks like a bullet. Also on the box collider, set is trigger to true. And finally, create a new script called bullet. In this script, we first need an integer for the damage. And we'll give it a default value of 20. Then for later, we need a game object for the effects. Finally, a layer mask to filter out what we can actually shoot. In the start method, we're simply going to destroy the game object after 2 seconds. This is so that when the bullet goes off the screen, it destroys itself automatically. Now we need to override on trigger enter 2D. Now we need to check that whatever object the bullet hit is the layer that is included in the layer mask. To do this, we'll need to use some bit manipulation. We can create a bool to represent this condition and set it to the following. If this operation results in zero, that means that this game object's layer wasn't included in the target layer mask. So if it wasn't zero, that means the game object's layer is at least one of the layers in the layer mask. Now we can check if this condition is true, then it means we want to damage them. To represent damageable objects, we can create an interface. And this will only have one method called take damage, with an integer parameter for the amount of damage we want to apply. Now we can get any component that implements that interface, and then if it exists, we can call the take damage method passing in this bullet's damage. This operator basically checks that this call didn't return null and then calls the method on it. It's the same thing as doing this. Now in the future we want to spawn some bullet effects, then we want to destroy this bullet. Back in Unity you can assign the script to the bullet and for the target layer mask we need to create a new layer. Head to this layer section and click add layer. Then at layer 6, you can create an obstacle layer. Now for the layer mask, choose this layer. Now underneath the player's player shoot component, we need to assign this bullet prefab. So reset the bullet's position and drag it to your project files. This creates a prefab. You can delete it from the scene. To keep things organized, you can create a folder for all your prefabs.
Now you can assign the bullet. Now if we play the game and click, you can see we're just logging it to the console. That's because we forgot to get rid of this and actually instantiate the bullet. So delete it, then instantiate a bullet and set it to a game object variable. You can also pass in position and rotation arguments to the instantiate method and since we want the bullet to have the muzzle's position and rotation, we can just pass it in. Finally we need to add a force to this bullet, so get the rigid body component and add a force to it. The force vector needs to be in the direction of the muzzle, so muzzle.up and it needs a magnitude of the bullet force. And also make sure that the force mode is set to force mode dot impulse. Impulse makes it so that it adds an instant force to the rigid body. Back in the inspector, make sure that the muzzle is assigned and play the game. Now when you shoot, you can see that we're shooting bullets and they're also getting destroyed. Now we need some actual things to destroy. So similar to the bullet, we need to create an asteroid prefab. Give it a circle collider and as a child give it a circular sprite which is its graphic and you can set the color to a dark gray and on the base parent object make sure that the layer is set to obstacle. Finally we need a script that implements the damageable interface so that we can actually damage and destroy this asteroid. So create a new script called asteroid and open it up. Now an asteroid needs to be a damageable object, so we need to implement this interface. We do this by simply adding the interface after mono behavior. And you can see it gives an error that it doesn't implement its methods. So we simply add the method and write the implementation. Now an asteroid needs to have health, so we can create a private int for the health with a default value of 100. Then when it takes damage, we subtract the health by the damage and if the health goes below zero we want to destroy the asteroid in the future we'll need to add some graphics to the destruction but for now we'll simply destroy the asteroid back in unity assign the script to the asteroid and create a prefab now just place multiple asteroids in the scene and play the game. Now you can see, when we shoot them after 5 shots, because 20 times 5 is 100, the asteroids get destroyed. Now the asteroids are a bit hard to see because of their color, so we need to change it. Instead of changing all of these individually, we can simply change the prefab. So double click on it to open it up, and then under the graphics, just set it to a lighter gray, and then click this back arrow. And now you can see all the asteroids reflected the changes. That's much better. Finally, it's time for some organization. The iDamageable interface isn't supposed to be in the bullet script. So instead, we create a new folder for our interfaces. And we create a new script called iDamageable. And we'll get an error, but that's fine. We'll take this from the bullet script and simply paste it in here. Now the error is gone. Thanks for watching the video. If you found it helpful, make sure to like, and if you want to see more, subscribe.